On a frigid March morning in the woods of Garrett County, this band of experts is nearly silent. State bear biologist Harry Spiker and his team with the Maryland Department of Natural Resources are preparing to approach a 170-pound black bear and her eight-week-old cubs. Even though the bear is in hibernation, there are risks. When we go in here, it's a, it's a tense situation for us because nine times out of ten, the bear is alert and awake when we walk in. They call it a den raid. First, Harry will shoot the mother bear, or sow, with a tranquilizer dart to knock her unconscious. Only then will the team move in to count the cubs and assess their health. One thing that we learned through tracking the reproduction is actually how healthy the habitat is and how healthy the population is doing. If the population started to reach um, biological carrying capacity, uh, then we'd see that number of cubs drop down. So this is a, a very important survey that we do every spring. Harry's team is moving slowly and deliberately to avoid startling the sow. An unlikely worst-case scenario is when a sow runs, leaving the den and her cubs behind. We're in that bear's living room right here, and uh, that bear can smell us, can hear us, see us coming. The brush is thick and noisy, and the sow senses she has visitors. Harry manages to hit her in the shoulder before she takes off from the den. Over there to block her. She went down over the hill. We got two darts in her. Yeah, across the road. Oh, that's, that's all right. I think, she, I think she's going to stay right there. I think she's going to run for cover. She's going to hang there. Yeah. So I'm not too concerned yet. Here we go. Making it up on the fly now. The good news for Harry and his crew is the sow is wearing a radio collar. That's how they were able to pinpoint her den in the first place. We have several bears across our four western counties throughout our bear range with radio collars. And uh, the whole purpose for that is to find out how many cubs they're producing. The black bear is so high profile in Garrett County, it's hard to go anywhere without running into some evidence of Maryland's largest mammal. Larry and Jerry Grossman didn't have to go past their Deep Creek Lake vacation home. So we drove up for the weekend one... Uh, one weekend in late November, we got here Friday night, and as we arrived, we realized that this lattice here was all ripped up. And that happened before, so I realized that a bear had been around, but I, I didn't think too much about it. The next morning, I got to thinking about it, and I thought, hmm, it's late in the year, I wonder. So I got down here and looked. And sure enough, there was this giant, half-inflated, fuzzy black beach ball, and I knew we had company for the winter. A 350-pound pregnant sow was making her den under the front porch. The Grossmans called Maryland's bear hotline and connected with Harry Spiker, who told them it was too dangerous to move her before she gave birth. They actually listened to us when we said it would, it would be best to, just to leave the bear there for a while, um, which not everybody is that willing to do that. I think she was a good house partner. She was good. She, she kept her distance, and we kept our distance, and it was a good relationship, don't you think? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> a few months later, it became a long-distance relationship. The Grossmans watched from a safe distance as Harry's team evicted the sow and her cubs and moved them to the woods. The claws is really what I had seen. And that's what you remember. That's what I remember, <laughs> yes. And it was pretty interesting. That's a once-in-a-lifetime experience for us. Black bears are native to Maryland, but most were killed off when pre-colonial settlers arrived. But about 30 years ago, the species made a comeback. Mike Sawyers, outdoors editor for Cumberland Times News, remembers it well. It still took a while for uh, the average person to start seeing bears in western Maryland. But once they started to see them, uh, we started to get calls here at the paper, and there was a real wow factor involved. The Times News started a weekly column 
Bear Watch, devoted to tracking sightings until there just became too many to print. Bear Watch is mostly made up of highway mortality of bears, and they've been hit on just about every highway in the two far western counties. As the bear population grows, adventurous young bears move further east each year, looking for new territory among the tract housing and congestion of central Maryland. They always wander back because the one thing they need in their habitat is other bears. So they'll end up in Pennsylvania, Virginia, or you know, western Maryland eventually, but, uh, but they create a stir when they pop up into those neighborhoods down there. Like in Gaithersburg, when a young bear stopped by for breakfast. I was sitting here having my breakfast and reading the paper, and there was a sudden crash on my deck, and I thought it was a raccoon because they get into our bird feeder. And I leaned back, and looked through the screen porch, and there was a big brown thing, and I knew it was not a raccoon, it was a bear. And my husband had just filled the figure that morning, so he was rolling it around. He discovered if he rolled it around, he would, he could get, shake the seat out. He would shake it and roll it around. He came and looked in the door once at us and turned around, came back and shook it some more. When he couldn't get any more out, he left. Black bears, especially the young, may appear cute or cuddly, but they are wild. And it's important for DNR officials to keep the population at a stable level. The state began a bear hunt in 2006 to help make sure the bears don't outgrow their environment. Many bears live undetected by their human neighbors, like the sow who ran during the den raid and left her cubs behind. She's dug out a bowl and then made a nice little nest down there uh, with all this debris. And she's been here since mid-November. And um, you know, we're a couple hundred yards from a couple houses. And, and I guarantee nobody had any idea she was, she was here. One, two, three. Luckily, she didn't run too far from the den as the team works to bring her back. The cubs are getting top-notch care. These cubs, they weigh uh, five and five and a half pounds. The veterinary staff is here, and they're, they're getting temperature, um, you know, basically just checking the vitals to make sure the cubs are in good health, and, and, and these guys look great. The sow is also due for a checkup. Chest, 37 and a half. Is that all the measurements? Uh, we got that one already. And it's time for a new radio collar. Now, we won't replace this again for two years. Whenever we come back uh, in two years, she'll have another litter of cubs. That's when we'll change the collar. And this one, I guarantee, will be chewed like crazy from the cubs that she's gotten out. One, two, three. After okay, about an hour, down. it's time to return the cubs to the go. den before their go. mother wakes up. There you go. I got it Pull the basket? You can. Okay. They get a dab of Vicks Vapor Rub before they're carefully nestled in with mom. The Vicks masks human scent. Um, she'll wake up, she'll lick it off of the cubs, and life is good. Okay, here comes number three. Okay, everything looks good. This is, this is how we're going to leave them, and we're going to back out and let nature take its course from here. And in the forest of outdoors Maryland, the black bear is thriving. Our bear population has grown over the years. I mean, these are the good old days for, for bears in Maryland. <laughs>